Hello and welcome to the video series using Tennessee LiDAR data in ArcGIS Pro. This video in particular is going to cover how to bring the point cloud data in uh, to ArcGIS Pro using a LAS data set. And then we're going to cover how to change the symbology and display of the point cloud data. So I have a blank project in ArcGIS Pro up. We've got uh, the Monegal, Tennessee area. Uh, we're going to look at four specific tiles. Take some ZLAS tiles, the point cloud data from tnmap.tn.gov, and we're going to put them into a LAS data set. So first thing we need to do is go to the Analysis tab, click Tools, and then in our geoprocessing search, we want to search Create LAS Data Set. Double click on that. And this opens up the geoprocessing tool for creation. Um, I've got input files, so we're just going to choose again four tiles. You can do .las files, but what we have served on the TNMAP data page are .zlas, and we'll hit OK. These are just on my C drive. Um, I'll give it an output location of just the same folder. You could pick whatever folder you would like. I'm going to call this LAS data set videos. I'm going to hit save and it automatically picked the coordinate system as Tennessee State Plain. That's well known ID uh, 6576. You can also keep the compute statistics if you want to generate any statistics uh, in your catalog window. You'd look at the properties and I'm going to click run. And now we have our four uh, tiles. I'm going to close my geoprocessing tools four tiles and right now the points are not displaying um, because we're zoomed out so far as we start zooming in uh, you can see uh, start to display currently we're looking uh, at the default view which uh, is showing 7.9 percent of the points uh, and is symbolized in uh, by elevation uh, with ArcGIS Pro, when you have a layer selected in your table of contents, you now have a set of tools that you can change the symbology and display, uh, as well as specific anal analysis tools. Um, so we've got symbology, point thinning, and filter. We also have surface constraints. Um, those are helpful when you have, let's say, a roadway corridor or a power line corridor, and you just want to look at uh, clip a section of your point cloud data out so that you can look at only it. We're going to look at the filter first, and now we have, again, all points shown now. We can click ground, and that will only show ground classified points. Um, you also see non-ground and first return points as options as well. First return points would be helpful if you're going to be generating a digital surface model uh, and using those first return points. Next, we'll look at the point thinning. So if we change, well, we're going to go back to the filter, I want to show all points, and I'm going to look at the full resolution at 1 to 1000. This point thinning basically changes how much uh, data we're viewing at one time. Um, I'm going to start zooming in to close to 1 to 1000, and we're going to start to see our percentage jump up. And since we have it set to 1 to 1000, we're going to look at 100% of the data. You can see how dense this, this data is. And you can also change your display limit and your density. We're going to go ahead and turn this back to auto just for the purposes of this video. For ease of drawing, we're not going to draw 100% uh, of the data points. The next thing we're going to look at is the Symbology tab. Um, this enables you to quickly change uh, the symbology using different um, rules. So we're going to symbolize it by class now. This is showing brown as classification code 2. And you can see a lot of the unassigned. Basically, those are unassigned uh, points that, that have not been classified. Here we have some class code 6, which these are buildings, and so you can see the points that were identified as, as building uh, features. So we'll move back over here to the bluff and uh, check out another bit of the symbology tab here. I'm going to turn it back to elevation. We have all points on and our symbology is on elevation points. There are, there's another method to change the display, and that's using a surface. And so uh, ArcGIS Pro uses the points to generate a TIN or a triangulated irregular network, and that's basically just a surface. As you can see here, we have all the points on, so this surface looks very rough. Um, so you can see where the trees are and where the, the interstate corridor is. If we turn the filter onto ground, we're going to smooth that 
uh, surface out, um, you can really see how how uh, how it looks without the the trees. Basically, just looking at the ground points here. So if I click on one of these areas or just click on on the surface, you can see it gives you an elevation, a slope, and an aspect of that uh, specific. Uh, part of the surface. I click close to the bluff, so we're looking at a 66% slope. Um, so I can symbolize by a slope raster as well. And here you can see that that bluff um, standing out, this great uh, uh, change in, in topography. And you can also symbolize by aspect. So if you're not familiar with aspect, it's basically what direction the topography is facing. Here we can see all north facing slopes being uh, symbolized as red. The next thing we can do is look at uh, contours and contours will show you over here. You can change the interval and uh, click on it and it'll give you the elevation again. This is using the point cloud. Um, you cannot export these contours. Um, but that, that basically sums up how we can change the symbology and filter and display uh, the point cloud data. The next video is going to focus on bringing this data into a 3D environment.